how challenging was it, you know, because it's unscripted, you know, you've gone through interviews, been on tour. How challenging was this really? I'm not going to lie. It was challenging keeping up with her. I mean, her stamina, that she just goes and goes and goes. And it was really just me and Dave Spearing, one other cameraman, shooting everything. And we wanted the smallest footprint because we didn't want a big crew. We wanted to sort of be invisible, like just flies on the wall, observing what was going on. Um, but it did mean that we were literally getting so little sleep for <laughs> those those weeks leading up to Wembley. Um, and, you know, that, that I think is sort of um, what makes the film feel a little more personal because uh, it's not formal interviews. It's just chatting in the car on the way to rehearsal or it is sitting there really late at night after she's performed, after she's come home you know, played with the kids, read them books, put them to bed. And she's finally <sighs> having a moment to herself and a glass of red wine and chatting with her husband. For all film-related interviews, reviews and content, please like and subscribe to Pooja Talwar. You can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. Hi, Michael. This is Pooja Talwar. We had met during The Greatest Showman. So my first question is, you do not set up easy tasks for yourself. First, you had the greatest uh, uh, showman, T.T. Barnum, and now you have perhaps the greatest performer of all time, Pink. You really do set yourself up for challenges, don't you? I, I do. <laughs> it's good to see you, Fuja. Um, I do. But, you know, I think in both cases, I very much um, enjoy the, the, the people that I creatively get to collaborate with. And that's, for me, what makes it so enjoyable and exciting. And, you know, it's a real privilege to, to get to do these projects. Awesome. And I saw, you know, the, docu, the documentary that you've made. It's just absolutely brilliant. I sang along. I laughed. And there were some very emotional moments as well. So how challenging was it, you know, because it's unscripted. You know, you've gone through interviews. Being on tour, how challenging was this really? I mean, I mean, it, I, I'm not going to lie. It was challenging keeping up with her. I mean, her stamina, that she just goes and goes and goes. And it was really just me and Dave Spearing, one other cameraman, shooting everything. And we wanted the smallest footprint because we didn't want a big crew. We wanted to sort of be invisible, like just flies on the wall, observing what was going on. Um, but it did mean that we were literally getting so little sleep for <laughs> those, those weeks leading up to Wembley. Um, and, you know, that, that I think is sort of um, what makes the film feel a little more personal because uh, it's not formal interviews. It's just chatting in the car on the way to rehearsal or it is sitting there really late at night after she's performed, after she's come home you know, played with the kids, read them books, put them to bed. And she's finally <sighs> having a moment to herself and a glass of red wine, chatting with her husband. And we were there, you know, to, to capture it. Awesome. And, you know, I must say, yes, Pink is the star, but the true stars are Willow and Jameson. You know, you really have future stars out there. Yeah, those kids are magical. I mean, both of them are so special. And, you know, Jameson is such a little charmer. And, uh, you know, Willow's, Willow's this, this, this sort of deep thinking little, um, you know, she's quite internal and, and I, I just, I, I found her fascinating to, to, that amongst all of this circus and, you know, craziness of what touring life is, there was just this stillness and um, yeah. she would just be sitting there looking at her mum and I'd always be fascinated thinking, well, what are you thinking, you know? True. And as you said, mom, and what comes across in this is think as the mother, not as the superstar, the woman that everyone looks up to, the mother. And then she makes a lot of poignant statements like, you know, she wants her children to see through her mortality, that, you know, she's only little Alicia who's trying to find herself. And that really came across. And what did you learn about Pink through the process that you were filming? it? You know, um, when we were making the film, the whole juggling 
being a rock star and being a mum was really important to me. I think that if you're watching a show about a rock star or a pop star, you don't necessarily relate to their world. It's so extreme and so different to the world that you and I live. Um, but if you make a, a story about being a mum and trying to do what's best for your kids and trying to balance your work life and your home life, well, I mean, that's a story that everyone can relate to. So I think that that was definitely the intention when we were setting out to make this. I, I think what I discovered, I mean, I discovered a lot, but I, I think what I really discovered was that there isn't a version of pink that she presents to the world that is different to the one she is at home. Um, I think that it's a, it, the, the pink that you know and love is very much that same person behind closed doors. And, um, you know, when, when, when you meet stars and you spend time with them, um, that's not always the case. I so get that. I so get that. And, you know, when I saw that, that's what, that larger than life persona, but then yeah, she's just a mom, you know. And also, mm -hmm. is documentary filmmaking your favorite format? You had Amy, now you have Pink. What are actually the struggles involved as such? And how do you switch between mediums? Yeah, they're just, they're very different disciplines, but it's all just about storytelling. So I think you, you look at different stories and you think, what is the best way to convey this? You know, is it a documentary? Is it a film? Is it a narrative film? Is it a narrative film musical? Is it um, for stage? I mean, it, all of those things come with their own license and their own creative challenges. Um, but uh, I think the story always dictates what, what, how you tell a story. And, you know, for me, the, the beautiful thing about musical projects is I feel that music brings a level of emotion. You know, you... You speak when words no longer, sorry, you sing when words no longer suffice. Hey, true, because I sang along as I was watching it and, you know, some of my favorite numbers and it starts with her uh, singing Madonna's Oh Father, which was her first stage performance, you know. So, I mean, there were really some awesome moments. I can't wait for people to watch it. So what is the first thing that has really inspired you? Really inspired you? This inspired me. You know, I don't have kids of my own, but uh, I have lots of nieces and nephews to practice on. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's really inspired me to not see the juggle of trying to pursue your dreams and your passion. That you can still do that when you have kids, you know. Um, you shouldn't look at having a family as this, this moment where everything has to stop. Um, and so that's what I really took away and learned myself, um, that it's okay to, um, have a family and still be able to chase those dreams. Absolutely. And also since we've all been through a crazy time the last year, so how did, what was it like you, how did you get your creative juices flowing literally during the pandemic, the crazy time that we've all lived through and we are still living through. I mean, process? You know, life's pretty hectic. So to just have pause put on and um, spend, you know, six months uh, away from the world, uh, it creatively, uh, for me, and, you know, I know for some people it was awful and I have friends who, you know, um, suffered terribly through the time uh, and, and still are. So I'm always mindful of how, you know, fortunate I was Oh, I am still to, you know, to be creative and and just on my own. You know, I can, you know, sit there with a, a pad and a pencil and I can work. Um, and also, I, you know, I'm fortunate in that, you know, because the way the way that I work is you work on projects, and so there's always times in between projects where. You know, there's months where you go without uh, an income. But that's okay because, you know, you sort of, you plan for that. And you go, oh, I'm working now, but I might not have work for another six months. Um, I think people who sort of live week to week and have a life that 
is basically set up to to have a check each week because of work. When people were unable to work, I mean that that was just horrific, and you know it, it was so hard on so many people. So I, I really feel um, very fortunate to have been in the position that I was, and um, and creatively that that pause was was actually um, a very productive time. Thank you so much. So what can we expect after all I know so far? Um, I'm I'm working on a, a, a stage musical uh, with the the music of Luciano Pavarotti, yeah. and uh, I'm working on a a musical biopic uh, on the life of Robbie Williams. Wow! Can't yeah, wait to see that. Thank you so much. Can't wait to crazy see life. that. It's a crazy life. It's a crazy life. But all my favorite performers. Thank you so much. All the very best. Pooja, lovely to see you. Like if you've liked this interview please like share and subscribe follow me on twitter and instagram